Sagamizer is the official, unofficial term used to describe the four stabby shanks at the end of Stegosaurian tales. If you're in the Morian Hall of Paleontology at the Houston Museum of Natural Science and you're gawking at our Stegosaurus, you'll definitely notice those four formidable two to three foot long swords at the end of its tail. You'd think that since you're there doing a science, that the four spikes would have yet another unpronounceable scientific name. But nope. Every scientist in the world, regardless of native language, knows and understands that what you are looking at is indeed, no joke, called the Thagamizer. So who, what, when, where, and most critically, why? One of my favorite comics in the world is Gary Larson's The Far Side. Well, mine and probably hundreds of millions of other people's too including, obviously, paleontologists as well. Larson is known for often using cows and aliens and etc. as the hilarious subjects of his one-panel comics. But he was obviously quite enamored with paleontology, using prehistoric creatures frequently, often with the comic liberty of setting cave people alongside dinosaurs and other creatures separated from man by millennia. In 1982, Larson penned the comic panel that would change the face of paleontology forever. Or at least, cement a term to describe a part of Stegosaurus that, as of yet, was undefined. In the comic panel, you see a caveman standing in front of a projection screen holding a pointing stick. Me saying that one sentence alone already testifies to Larson's comedic brilliance. We haven't even gotten to the joke yet, and already every shred of detail is hilarious. It's why the master himself only needed a single panel to perfectly weave an entire story. Anyway, the caveman presenter is giving his lecture to a room full of other loincloth-clad cave people. His pointing stick aimed nonchalantly at the four spikes of a stegosaurus's tail. The caption under the panel reads, Now this end is called the Thagamizer. After the late Thag Simmons. Even this caption is a single sentence that is the sporting equivalent of hitting a grand slam so hard it knocks the cover off the baseball. An omen as to this panel's future greatness. Yes, that was a very loose Sandlot reference. But back to Thagamizer. While Larson's Thagamizer comic debuted in 1982, the term wouldn't be unofficially official until 1993. I keep saying unofficially official because Thagamizer is part of the English lexicon. If you type it wrong, it will be underlined in red until you correct it. You can play it in Scrabble. It is used in earnest by every scientific institution in the world, including the Smithsonian, scientific publications, and even BBC documentaries. It is a silly term taken seriously. It's like Whoever is controlling the Matrix has a sense of humor. So why did it take 11 years to become unofficially official? Well, in 1993, Kenneth Carpenter, a then paleontologist for the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, used the term at the 1993 Society of Vertebrate Paleontology annual meeting. My goodness, that's a lot of syllables. And, well, it stuck. It stuck like a thagomizer in the poor late Thag Simmons rest in pieces. In my opinion, it must have been a breath of fresh air to unofficially officially adopt such a humorous term into the often stuffy, often ego-driven world of paleontology. Trust me, passions run deep in these circles, and adopting the term thagomizer was probably a welcome twist of the pressure relief valve. Remember, Jurassic Park was also released in 1993, and the theory that some dinosaurs were closely related to birds was a radical concept in pop culture, but had been hotly debated, even scoffed at by paleontologists, for years prior. A modern analog to this heated theory would be, among other things, the theory that Triceratops may have had quills or feathers. If you want to deep dive into that theory, subscribe to the Houston Museum of Natural Science YouTube channel. I will of course provide a link in the description to the video in question. Now back to Thagomizer. Let me blow your mind about the Thagomizer and Stegosaurus in general. We exist closer on the timeline 
to Tyrannosaurus rex than T. rex did to Stegosaurus. We live about 66 million years or so away from T. rex, but Stegosaurus went extinct 80 million years before T. rex even showed up. I know, Jurassic Park kind of put all the dinosaurs together. Now, I won't get into the weeds with this, but the Jurassic Park novel by Michael Crichton drives home the theme that since the gaps in dino DNA were filled with amphibian DNA, that the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park were more akin to freaks of nature created in a lab, not authentic, true dinosaurs. But I digress. Back to the actual Thagomizer, an actual Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus defended itself from, among other predators, Allosaurus. At first glance, you'd think Allosaurus looks like a T-Rex, but closer inspection reveals radical black and white differences. Not to mention that T-Rex and Allosaurus never lived during the same time period. Anywho, forensics often overlaps with paleontology. We have found striking evidence, pun intended, that Stegosaurus almost certainly fought with Allosaurus. Thagomizer spikes are two to three feet long, and lo and behold, we have found two to three feet long gashes in the skeleton of Allosaurus. And we find Allosaurus teeth littering the kill sites of Stegosaurus and other sauropods. So we know they had run-ins of varying success for both parties involved. Evidence also suggests that Stego's tail was extremely flexible, unlike many other dinosaur tails it could likely whip its tail around so adaptably it had the agility of a rapier, able to strike enemies at its side, not just from behind. Scientifically speaking, the theory that the tail was so flexible comes from the observation that, in other dino tails, we can find ossified tendons that are not, at least as of yet, observed in Stegosaurus's tail. Ossified means mineralized, or in other words, fossilized rubbery tendons that have turned to rock. We can find these rocky tendons in other dinosaurs, but not in Stegosaurus's tail. Hence, the theory that the Thagomizer was attached to something more like a flexible rope than a more rigid, linked chain. And that's obviously a very casual, loose description on my part to help visualize. And that's that for the Thagomizer. With this new knowledge, you are sure to be a hit at the bar or your next dinner party. Just be sure to pour one out for the late Thag Simmons. You've been listening to Science Bites, a podcast from the Houston Museum of Natural Science with your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger. Be sure to subscribe to Science Bites and our flagship podcast, Beyond Bones, in your favorite podcast player. If you enjoy the Science Bites podcast and our outstanding Beyond Bones podcast, be sure to tell your friends. You can also drop us a line at podcasts at hms.org with feedback and topic suggestions you'd love to hear covered. If your podcast player allows you to leave a star rating or a review, that'd be amazing as well. But for now, as always, thanks for listening and stay curious.